Okay, this short video introduces Unit 28, Assignment 5, Task 4, which is to do with integration of a function and a consideration of what we end up with when we, when we integrate that function and what the value of the constant of integration is. So let's look at an example and then you can come back and consider this question here. We're going to look at a function that represents what happens as we extend a spring by adding masses to it. F equals minus kx, which you might recognise as Hooke's law. As I extend a spring, the force, the restoring force, which actually acts in the opposite direction to the extension, so which is why it's negative, gets bigger and bigger. We can see that zero in this particular diagram represents the original length of the spring. And then we put a mass on the end which pulls it down and we extend it distance x, which is this distance here. If we plotted a graph of the restoring force against x, we would expect to get a straight line, which you'd expect from Hooke's law. And uh, as long as we don't go beyond the elastic limit, we get a linear relationship like this. And you probably remember to get the spring constant k, we find the gradient of the curve. But what we want to do is consider what happens when we integrate this function with respect to x. Integral of minus kx dx. Note what I've not put here is what the integral represents, because that's what we're after thinking about. But that doesn't stop us, though, performing the integration. So what is the integral of minus kx? Well, we can take the minus k outside the integral because it's constant. So we're actually just integrating x with respect to x. Integrating x with power 1, add 1 to the power, squared, divide by the new power. So we end up with x squared over 2, bringing the minus k back in, we end up with this integral. So the answer is minus kx squared over 2 plus this constant of integration. Now we need to consider what does this represent and what is the value of this constant. Well, what does it represent? When we integrate something, we know, don't we, that that's the area under the curve. But what does that represent? In this particular case, what does the area under the curve represent. So if we look again at this particular graph that we plotted and we consider two points x1 and x2 then we know that when we integrate the function between x1 and x2 so that would be a definite integration we could find the area underneath this curve. The question is what does that area represent? And to answer that we consider what is being plotted force against distance because the area under this curve will have units which when we find the area of some rectangular type shape like this it's width times height so for this one it will be the units the area will be the units of whatever the height is in multiplied by the units of whatever the width is in and that will be newton times meters force times distance so it has that the area is force times distance, which is what we've plotted on the graph. So it's whatever you've plotted will give you what the area is, what it represents. And the unit will be whatever the unit on the y-axis is, newtons multiplied by meters. Hopefully you recognise this. Force times distance. That represents something that we know. We give a name to this and that's the work done. So actually the area underneath this curve represents the work because work equals force times distance. So in a problem where we're plotting force against distance, the area underneath the curve always represents the work done, which could then be the energy used up and so on. So you can do all sorts of calculations finding the area underneath this curve. So we can write an equation for the work done. Because we've done the integration, the work equals a half kx squared plus c. 
Notice I've not bothered to put in the minus sign here because in the original function the minus sign was there just because it was the restoring force. Now we're after the amount of work done, so we're not interested in the direction. Work done, half k x squared plus c. So all we need to do now is find these values for k and c. So we need some real results. We need either a set of results so we can plot a graph or we need two situations so we can set up some simultaneous equations and solve it. So we either plot the graph and as we've said already get k by finding the gradient under the curve because k is the gradient and to find the gradient, we divide how far we've gone along x by how far we've gone up, as you know. So that will give us a value of k. But more than that, if we look back to the original function, we can find c, because if x is 0 in this expression, then all of this is going to disappear, and the work done will be whatever c is. So what does c represent? How do we find c? c is just the point at which it cuts the y-axis. And that will represent the work done at the start of our extension. So that would be assuming that the spring is preloaded, for example. Or, as I said, we set up two simultaneous equations to solve it. And that would be used if we have got two sets of values for the work done and the distance travelled. We, we've got two equations two unknowns and we can then solve it. So let's look in a bit more detail at that. Let me give you some information. If x equals 0.18 metres, so the extension is 0.18, then the work done will be 44.3 newton metres, or joules actually. Again, if we now extend it to 0.35 metres, the work done turns out to be 11.19 metres. So we can find k and c. And k and c are given here. Look, k turns out to be that, c turns out to be that. So try solving those two simultaneous equations. Set up two equations, one and two, and then use those. Eliminate one of the variables, and that's quite easy to do, actually, because c is the same in both. And then find the values, k and c. On the next slide, if you pause, on the next slide I'll actually show you the two equations set up and then you can carry on from there and try and solve them. So here are the two equations set up. Now go from there and try and solve them. So finally, what does K represent? The stiffness of the spring or the spring constant. And what does C represent? The work done at the start. When x equals 0. So we've now got two formulae to represent this situation that we had right at the start. Here they are. So for a spring, some sort of spring, with a mass on the end, we've got the familiar Hooke's law which represents the force on the spring, and in this case k is minus 1,500. But we've also now got a new formula that allows us to find the work done to find uh, moving this spring from one position to another position, distance x. Okay, now you go back and have a look at the task, because it's a similar situation. You've got to integrate the function with respect to time. Explain why this integral gives us a value, a new function which gives us the distance travelled s. And then you've got to calculate the constant of integration, given uh, that u equals 5 metres per second, a equals 9.81. And the distance travelled after 5 seconds is 145 metres. What does this constant of integration represent?